Hello, hello everyone. Got a few people still coming in and connecting to audio there. Welcome, welcome. All right, so as some people are um, still coming into the uh, room here, uh, I just wanna get started by letting you all know I am Brandy and I am the support director here at Details. Um, so I'm going to be your host today. I also have my co-host Miranda here, who is going to be manning the chat. Um, and so as we go through, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, feel free to put those in the chat there. Um, we will have kind of a Q&A at the end. So if anybody you know has any questions and wants to go over that at the end, we can certainly do that as well. Um, I do ask that everybody just keep your um Microphones on mute for the entire um, class today, uh, at least until the end when we do have uh, questions and everything so that we can get through our entire class today. Um, we are going to be going over a lot today. So we've, we're going to be kind of briefly touching on each of the different topics for our webinars that we've had throughout the year. Um, so it's going to be kind of our year in review for our tips and tricks webinars that we've done. Um, so that is going to encompass our form builder, um, updating your company defaults. It's going to be the worksheet, uh, creating collections in both the item gallery and the recipe gallery. We're going to go over some of the updates that we did in the recipe gallery and then also on the payments page within an event. Um, and then we're also going to go over the cost page at the end. Um, so lots of things to cover today. Again, we are going to be just briefly touching on all of these topics because it is going to be a condensed version of all of these. Um, but not to worry, if you have any additional questions about any of these features, you can always reach out to our team. Um, but in our follow-up email, I'm also going to include the links for all of the different uh, recordings that we did throughout the year for each one of our tips and tricks. So uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about a specific topic, we will have those recordings available to you in that follow-up email as well. All right, so it looks like we uh, are still getting a couple people that are coming in, but we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen here. Perfect. All right, so <clears throat> let me just go ahead and open up my little chat so I can make sure to see everything that anyone is talking about. All right, lovely. So um, to get started today, we're going to start off with our form builder. This is one of our newer features. Um, we did add it, I want to say at the end of last year. Um, anybody who doesn't have the form yet, you can always sign up for the form in the premium features option here on the main menu. Um, there's a little uh, form that you fill out to get uh, the form builder. And then from there, you will have a link right here on your main menu to go right into that form list. For anybody who doesn't know, the form builder is actually an area where you can create a multitude of different forms, the most popular being an intake form that you can host on your website for people to fill in any important details about their event. And then you also have the option for those responses to automatically create an event in details. Um, so if uh, you do not have the form builder, again, you can sign up for that at any point. It's an added feature, so it's gonna be either $25 per month if you wanna do a monthly, or you can add it for $250 for the entire year. That'll save you $50 over the course of the year. All right, so here in our forms area, when we're ready to create a new form, we're gonna go to the Create New Form button. From there, you can fill in all of the information about your form. And then at the bottom here, we have a toggle to make this form active. And then if you want it to automatically create that event and map the responses into an event in details, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and click on that create event and toggle that to yes. In the advanced tab, you also have some additional options here for multiple submissions. Um, if this is gonna be your intake form, if that's your primary purpose for creating that form, would recommend that you go ahead and put that multiple submissions on there. What that means is um, it will allow people to come in and fill out that form more than once. Um, so for example, if you have repeat customers, maybe you're doing their wedding and then a year later, you're gonna do an anniversary party for them. You'll wanna make sure to have that form available for them to fill out uh, multiple times. So 
go ahead and put that multiple submissions on there. The most important thing when creating a form is to ensure that you have an open date. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my open date as today. If this is going to be your intake form, you're hosting it on your website forever and always, you'll uh, leave the close date empty. But if you're creating a form for uh, some other purpose, maybe like a feedback form or something like that, that you only want to run you know, for, for this month, we're going to request everybody submit feedback on this form. You can certainly go ahead and put a close date in there as well. Below that, you can also do, um, you can have it automatically create an event name. So for example, if I want my event name to always be the client's name and the uh, event location, I can certainly do that by uh, putting in different uh, tokens, if I spell it correctly. There we go. And then um, you can use any of the tokens that are available here when you click on the personalize button. If you are not familiar with tokens, um, tokens are actually uh, in a variety of areas throughout details. So you can use them in your contract terms, you can use them on your forms, you can use them on your proposals. Um, so lots of great areas for you to use those. Basically tokens are going to allow you to uh, create a customized, either via contract terms or proposal or an event name without customizing it each time. So for example, I'm gonna, make my next event uh, the client's name and the event location, but I don't want to have to physically enter in that information. The tokens will automatically populate that each time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that save button at the bottom. From there, you are going to get an option to either start off with one of our preloaded templates, or you can create one from scratch on your own. Um, if you are using the pre-made templates, they are set already to be mapped. Um, and so they will map basically like the client's name is going to map to the client name field in, in your event. The uh, event date is going to map automatically to the event date field. If you're doing this from scratch, you are going to have to go in and set those fields to map wherever you'd like them. And we'll go over that in just a minute. Um, Susie Hort said, how do you access the tokens? So um, I, I guess I'm kind of confused on that question though, uh, to access them, you would just go in and like type them into that field. Um, there is, you, you'll see like an area that has brackets that you can click on that will take you to an article that will let you know what tokens are available. Um, but from there, you're going to physically uh, put them into that field yourself and manually type them in. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, um, feel free to uh, elaborate a little bit there and I'd be happy to assist further. Um, okay, so right now I'm going to go ahead and start off from a template, and I am going to go into the wedding intake form, and I will load that template. Awesome, and then uh, thank you, Miranda, for adding in that um, article there about the tokens. All right, so this is going to be my wedding intake form. If you're using our pre-made template, this is what it will look like. It does have that marble background. It will automatically put in your company logo. And then um, the rest of this is going to be exactly as you see it here. For any one of the fields that we have on here, you can edit or adjust any of this information. So to do that, each one of your different components here are going to have uh, what I like to call a little DJ board. Kind of looks like a DJ board here for your settings. And you'll be able to go in and edit any of the information within that uh, particular component. So for example, in uh, this first area here, it does say your company name here. So you'll wanna go in and put in your actual company name. So like Tails Flowers, and then you can close that and it will update there. Um, for each of the different components, there are gonna be different options. So for example, in an input box, if I go to go edit that, um, this is going to be the most versatile component, I would say. Uh, you have the option for this to be a text, email, phone number, US phone, or a URL. Um, so right now I have it as a text input box, and this is going to be uh, where my client is going to put their name. Um, below that, we have the option to make any component here on this uh, sheet required or not. So I can just toggle that on or off. 
And then um, you can always put a placeholder in any of your fields to uh, let your client know exactly how they're supposed to be formatting their answer here. So in this case, um, my your name is going to be first and last. So I've gone ahead and put that in there as my placeholder. Um, the layout is going to be how the field um, is laid next to your label. So whether that be uh, label and then the field, or if you want it to be label and then the field underneath, um, it's going to be either side by side or stacked. And then right under that, we have an area for set value as. If you are mapping your responses into an event in details, this is where you will map them. So for example, this is my uh, client name field. So I wanna map that into the contact name uh, field within my event. As we can see here, we do have a variety of different options here for mapping and each component type has different mapping options. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, as I said, it will start off with this lovely marble background here. Uh, we tried to make it as uh, kind of generic, if you will, so that it would kind of fit into a lot of different schemes here. Uh, but of course, we always recommend that you keep on brand for your company. Um, so in the upper right hand corner, we're going to have a menu option here. And we are going to see an area here for form defaults. So you can come in here and change that background image to fit more in line with your brand if you have one that you like to put in there. This is also where you can adjust your fonts. Uh, this font selector is gonna be the exact same font selector that we have on our proposals. So if you're familiar with that, it's gonna be the same process here. And then you'll also have an area for you to adjust the different colors um, on your form as well. So again, another option there to keep on brand. Um, ours is a teal color, so we have ours set to be teal. All right, lovely. So um, for each one of these different components, you'll go in and you can make any adjustments. You can also add additional components. If there's something that you want to have on your form that didn't come included with um, the pre-made template, you can certainly add a new component at any time. Um, once you're done, you will have this preview option to go in and view the form exactly as your client would and make sure that everything looks exactly as you would like it. Um, again, this is going to be a condensed version today, so if you're interested in learning more about the form, we are going to link the uh, the full recap video that we did on the form builder um, earlier this year, and then you can also, of course, always reach out to our team by using the chat feature here or from the main menu under support and contact us, and we can definitely supply you with some uh, more information here. All right, so going back into our event list, the next uh, topic here that we're going to cover is going to be your company defaults. So as we are getting started into a new year, 2023, we always, always, always recommend that you go in and do an audit of your account. One of the things that I recommend that you start with is going to be your company defaults. Um, you know, maybe things have changed in your company and you didn't uh, go in here and change it throughout the year, or maybe, you know, you have a different set of contract terms that you're going to try out for this year um, to be more in line with uh, the changes in your area. So I would always recommend to go in there and adjust your company info. So I'm going to start off in the info section here. So this is going to be all of the information about your company, mostly contact information. Um, this does automatically show up on the top of each one of your proposals. So you'll want to make sure that this is all up to date. The email address that's listed here is also going to be where your signed proposal notifications will go. So each time somebody signs a proposal in your account, it will send an email over to whatever email you have listed here, notifying you that that has happened. Um, so you'll again want to make sure that that's completely up to date there. Next is going to be your event defaults. So this will be your default worksheet. Um, you'll want to make sure to have any sections, line items, fees, things like that, that you're going to traditionally use in every single one of your events here on this default. Um, you won't want to put any recipes here. You won't want to put any um, items here or anything unless you have like base recipes that you always use, in which case you can certainly do that here. Um, but again, this is going to be just like the bones of your uh, of your 
events. So each um, account in details does come preloaded with our wedding template here in the default worksheet. Um, but of course, you can certainly adjust this if you do more corporate events or if you do uh, other types of events here. All right, so on this design worksheet, you can make any changes to any of the existing sections. You can also drag and drop new sections from the left hand side over onto the right and then rename and add as many lines as you would like. Um, for any one of the sections on here that you want to remove, you can certainly click on that trash can in the upper right hand corner. Same thing with our line items, you can do it individually by clicking on the X to the right. Um, on the left hand side, I always like to mention that there is a section over here for removed sections and removed lines. So if at any point you want to restore something that has previously been deleted, you can do so on this side just by dragging and dropping it over here onto the right hand side. Another great thing to look at while we're here is actually going to be that taxes section. So I'm going to put that up here at the top. Um, in details, it will come preloaded with that 6.5% tax. So you'll wanna make sure to change that for your area. Um, but also this is another great way to uh, come in here and say, oh, you know what? My area actually has changed our tax rate. We're now gonna be at 7% instead of 6.5. Um, and then you'll wanna come in here and adjust that as you see fit. In the upper right-hand corner, we have our options menu and then worksheet settings. So you can come in here and adjust your admin fee rate if you have one that you charge each time uh, you create an event. And then this is also where you can adjust your default markup. Um, as uh, we kind of go into more and more inflation, as I'm sure everybody has seen, you may want to come in here and annually or even like quarterly come in here and reevaluate your default markup to make sure that, you know, everything is being covered. Um, 300 is certainly kind of like a minimum that we recommend. Uh, but of course, if you live in some more populated areas, I would recommend doing a higher markup. All right, so then any changes here, you'll just want to make sure to click that save button at the bottom. Next is going to be our contract terms. So um, this is something that I recommend that you uh, audit annually, if not quarterly, because things change all the time. You'll want to make sure that you're always going to be covered should anything happen. Um, so you can come in here and make adjustments to any one of your different terms. You can also add additional contract terms at any point. Please keep in mind that the changes that you make here are not retroactive. So what that means is basically if you change it now, any of the events that are already existing are not going to automatically update. Um, you can certainly change that on a per event basis, and you can load your defaults into any existing events from the event um, event terms area. Um, but just to keep that in mind, and then going back to those personalization tokens in the upper right hand corner, there's going to be another button here for you to uh, see what the available token options are here for your contract terms. Um, do recommend that you come in here and put those tokens in here. It's just another way to basically create a customized set of contract terms for somebody without actually having to do the work of customization. Um, in your financials area, this is where you're going to set all of your default payment terms. And then also, if you uh, take checks, you'll put that information here on the left-hand side as well. Um, you can adjust your convenience fee here. If you need to change out your currency or anything like that, that will also live here. Um, on the right-hand side, we're going to see your default payment schedule. So you can add additional payments or make any adjustments to existing payments here as well. And the last section in your company um, area is going to be invoicing. Anybody who is not currently connected with details invoicing, this is always an option. It is an optional feature. So um, if you choose to connect with the details invoicing, this is where you will go to do that. Um, if you're not already connected, it will have a button here for you to connect with Stripe. Um, and then you can start processing payments directly through details. Um, I would recommend coming in here annually to check and make sure that the verbiage here for each one of your emails is uh, exactly as you want it. And if you need to make any changes, you can do so on this page as well. Um, again, any changes made here are not going to be retroactive. So any existing events will not be affected by the changes that you make here.
All right, going back into our event list, the next topic that we have is going to be the worksheet. So I have uh, created an event for us to use here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go through um, the worksheet and the different options that we have here. Uh, Sandra says, is there, are there other companies that Details connects with? Invoicing companies. No, we are exclusive with Stripe uh, at the moment, but if there's anybody that you'd like to see in the future, feel free to uh, put that there in the chat, and I'll definitely pass that along to the, um, the rest of our team. All right, so going here into our tips and tricks webinar uh, event. Maru, okay. Thank you, Sandra. All right, so I'm going to go into our event that I've created here, and I'm going to navigate over into the worksheet, and we can start going over all of the different topics. So for the tips and tricks webinar that we did here on the worksheet, we went over basically everything that you can do on the worksheet. We are, again, going to do a condensed version of that, um, but this is where the majority of uh, things happen in details are going to be here on this worksheet. It's probably... I don't know, arguably the most important thing that you will do while creating an event, um, because we want to make sure that we're staying in budget. We want to make sure that, you know, we're we're going to be able to order full bunches when we make it to the cost page, um, that we're charging the necessary fees, um, that we're not shorting ourselves on what we're charging people, uh, especially now with the price of items and things that we're, we're seeing. All right, so here on the worksheet, again, it's going to already filter in with your default worksheet that you set up in your company settings. All right, so to start off with, I'm going to go in and create my color palette. So I'm going to do kind of a purple and white theme, as you can see on the design board there. So I'm going to come on down here and I can drag and drop to select the different colors I'm Going to add to selection. Go ahead and do white there. Also in the color palette, you can input a color by hex, Pantone code, anything like that. Um, so here's an example of blush. And then next is gonna be from image. So you can always upload an image that's sent in by our client and then drag and drop the square around to locate the actual color from within uh, the photo itself. Below that, we have suggestions. These are gonna be the suggestions based on the color that you have in your main color square. Things like different shades and tints, a complementary color palette, um, and you can select an individual color out of this palette, or you can always click the drop down arrow to favorite them all, create a color collection, or to select them all for this uh, event. Next is going to be our favorites. So anytime that you click that add to favorites button, that color will now live in your favorite colors area. And you can come back in here and select that at any point. Below that is gonna be our collections. So uh, if you've created a collection, it will live here. Again, you can select an individual color out of a collection, or you can click the drop down menu to select all for this event. In the history, this will show the last 60 colors that you've looked at, so if you ever need to go back. And then you have your selection, which will show the colors that you've selected for this particular event. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that down button. No thanks, lovely. So now I've got my color palette up there. You can always drag to reorder these at any point. And if you ever wanna remove a color, you can click on the trash can in the upper right-hand corner. All right, it looks like we've got a couple of questions here. Will there be an option for clients to enlarge an image on the digital proposal? You mean to like click uh, on an item and enlarge the photo there? Um, Erica says, are we going to be able to organize the Inspiration Gallery? It's currently in development right now, Erica. We're hoping for um, an early 2023 release. We'll be sure to let you know though. All right, right below that is going to be our tables and seating section. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in my estimated number of guests, how many people are going to be at my head table. And then for each table after that, I want to have six people per table. And it's going to automatically calculate the number of guest tables that I need. All right, so then when we're ready to start building out our arrangements, I've already got some recipes and items on my design board here. Uh, but if I didn't, then I would go into my resource section and I would go into the individual collect or excuse me, galleries here and grab all of my items and recipes. If you're curious about that process, um, 
uh, Miranda, can you go ahead and put in um, an article about adding items and recipes onto your design board there for me? Um, and you guys can reference that at any point. All right, so moving on to our bouquet section here, I normally like to start off with a pre-made recipe. This can be something that I made on a previous event and saved to my gallery, um, but this can also be something that um, I went into my recipe gallery and just built when I had some free time. And so now I wanna use this on uh, my event here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop my pre-made recipe over onto my uh, worksheet. And that will populate with any of the items that I had associated with that recipe when I initially created it. From there, you can certainly go through and adjust any of the quantities for the items that we have here. You can also put in a description or any notes about the arrangement as well. This is a great opportunity here to also adjust any of your individual STEM costs. So if you're seeing things at a higher price, like right now, it looks like this sheer ivory ribbons was actually input with a zero cost. So this will give me the opportunity to come in here and add in a price. Um, from there, I'm gonna go ahead and give this recipe a quantity. And then it's gonna show me what I should be charging based on the cost of items times my markup plus my cost again. Um, but of course, I can always come in here and adjust that estimated price if I want it to be a little bit more uh, well-rounded. And I can lock that recipe in. So what the lock means is now if I make any changes to anything here on the bottom, it's not going to adjust my estimated price, but I will still be able to see what I should be charging uh, based on the cost and markup. Maureen says, can you select a photo from inspiration board instead of uploading one? So look, like a, a, a photo that you already have in your inspiration gallery. If you could just elaborate on that a little bit. All right, so then um, let's just say though that um, I wanna go ahead and I wanna build one uh, a recipe from scratch now. So I've added on my boutonniere recipe over here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to drag and drop that recipe over here onto uh, my worksheet. It doesn't have any recipe included in it yet, so I'm going to go ahead and start building that out. So I'm going to drag and drop the items that I need right over into uh, my recipe here on the right-hand side. And you can do this with... Um, you know, we recommend that you do it all the way down to like the pins that you're going to use, um, any of the mechanics and things that you're going to use so that you're going to get the most accurate cost here. From there, again, I can go ahead and put in a quantity up here at the top. Oh, only one. Burger. All right. Um, but let's say that because I'm obviously using this for my groom, I want to use the same ones in my groomsmen, the father of the brides, things like that. So in the upper right-hand corner in recipe options, I'm gonna go ahead and update my gallery recipe. So originally the recipe was just a photo, but now that I have all of these items to include in it, I'm gonna go ahead and click that update gallery recipe. It'll ask me if I'm sure. And then from there, go back up here to my recipes. I can go down to my groomsmen and I can drag and drop that recipe right onto my worksheet and it will have all of the associated items here. Perfect. All right. Um, if there's a photo already in the gallery, how do we access that for the colors, color selection? Ah, for the colors. So you can't select a, a photo on the from image tab of the um, color palette that you already have existing in your account, no. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, go down a little bit here. So let's just say, though, I didn't have my um, recipe or my photo or anything over here on the left-hand side. I do also want to mention that you can click this plus symbol here for any one of your line items and add a blank recipe. From there, I can click on my watermark image here, and I can upload an image, and I can also select um, an image from my inspiration gallery if I already had one there as well. So just to let you know that those options are there. And then if I'm creating a new recipe and I wanna save that recipe to my gallery, 
You also have that option here in the recipe options to save it as a new gallery recipe. That way, if you're creating something like, um, like a blush wedding or that green and white or you know something that you're seeing over and over again, you can go ahead and save that recipe to your gallery and reuse that in a future event. Um, moving down though, I also wanna mention that for the worksheet, this is of course gonna be where you're creating your arrangements. It's gonna be the nice, pretty section that we all love. But we also want to talk about all of the, uh, I don't know, less fun things, which are going to be like your fees, your labor, your services, things that you need to be charging on each one of your events. Um, and you can do that here on the worksheet as well. So um, in my services section, I have things like boutonniere pinning and a mock of the table design that I can add here. Below that, I've also got an event staff section. Um, this is gonna be your labor, but you do also have a variety of ways to do labor, so we'll go over each of them. Um, the first is gonna be this event staff section. It's gonna allow you to itemize out each type of team member that you have, the number of each that's going to be working at your event, the hours in which they're working, and then the rate at which they're paid. And then you can go ahead and mark if that's taxed or not. I do get a lot of questions on why that box is there. Some, uh, some states charge on labor tax on labor and some don't. So um, if, you, if your state charges tax on labor, I would go ahead and uh, you can mark these on your event defaults. And that way, each time you have this on your worksheet, it will already be checked there. The secondary option for labor, and this is also going to be where you put any of your additional fees that you have, is going to be in that fees section. So I'm going to go ahead and add a row. I can rename this labor. Um, I can then go ahead and choose if I want to apply this to my uh, product services or labor. I'm going to apply it to products since that's what I'm doing the labor on. Do that as a flat amount. On each one of the sections, it doesn't have to be just the, the fee section, but um, because I'm doing this as the labor on the right hand side, I want to tax this as a taxable labor. Shows up in my summary section here at the bottom. So for right now, I have this in fees and it's taxed as a taxable labor. So that's exactly where it's showing up here on uh, my summary section. However, if I have something like a delivery fee here, that's going to be 20. I have it taxed as a taxable service, and that's going to show up in my fees column for the services line. So just something to keep in mind there. When I'm done, I'm gonna click that save button at the bottom. I always recommend that you save um, a version anytime that you make changes and leave the page. So this is gonna be my first draft. Versions are always gonna be stored in the upper right-hand corner in the options menu under load version. And you'll be able to see every time that this worksheet has been saved, who it was that saved it and when. Also in the save button, you can always save this as a template. So going back to if we're doing a very popular color scheme or um, a style that's very popular, you can save this as a template. And that way, when somebody else comes in with that exact same style or color palette, you can load in the template and then just make some minor adjustments. Templates are also gonna be housed under the options menu in load template. And then finally here under worksheet, um, the one thing that I always recommend that you do before you leave this and to go order your products is gonna be on the menu button under items needed. And this is where you're gonna see your stem counts. So it will let you know how close you are to using full bunches. Uh, for example, let me just use this dried lavender here. It's gonna tell me um, that I am under by 18 because I need uh, to have 25 stems per bunch. So right now I'm only using seven stems. So I can choose to either up my lavender count or I can choose to remove it completely, um, but it's gonna let me know how close I am to using full bunches. 
Anything in red means that I am nowhere near a full bunch. Anything in the gray color means that I'm within 20%. And then anything that's in green means that I'm right on the money. I'm using exact full bunches. All right, so next, let's go ahead and head over into our resources. We talked a little bit about um, collections this year, both in the item gray and um, in the recipe gallery as well. The recipe gallery collections are new this year, um, so we're going to go over both of those options. Functionality with this is going to be uh, primarily the same in both the item gallery and the recipe gallery with uh, a few small differences. Susie says, if we need to remove it completely, do we have to do that manually on each recipe? Yes, Susie, you do. Or is there a way to remove an item throughout the proposal with one click? No, you'll need to go to each individual recipe that's uh, using that item and um, you'll remove it from there. In the we've got a bunch of different collections. Some are from our partner collections, and some of them are ones that we have made ourselves. If you'd like to make a new collection, you can always go into your item gallery under the Add New button in the upper right hand corner and click on New Collection. You're going to fill out information about your collection. Lavender. Beautiful. I can do a background color or I can also do a background image depending on what I would like. And then I can go ahead and click the add collection. One of the great things about collections is they're very versatile. One of the things that I uh, highly recommend that you do, especially if we're doing things like um, templates or uh, different color collections for things in color schemes is to also go ahead and create a collection. So being this particular lavender style over and over again, I can come in and create a collection. And then I can take everything that's already on my design board and go into um, add it here to my collection. So I can go in and add any of those items over here onto my collection. Got a couple people coming in. Looks like my internet is on anybody. Uh, excuse me, drop off, let me know. Um, <laughs> all right, so for any other items that I might want to add, though, I can go into any of these color collections here, and I can grab them from one collection and move them to another. So for example, I've already actually got a lavender collection, so I'm going to cheat a little bit, uh, but this process will be the same no matter what collection you're coming to or from. So for example, in here, I'm going to click on at the bottom, selection mode. I can click on any of the items that I want to move over. From there, at the bottom, I'm going to click the copy button. And then I can go, I can actually use my little book here, or I can go back into uh, my main gallery, depending on how I want to navigate here, to my gallery home. I click right into my lavender collection that I have here. And it... but let's just say, kind of like what I did with this item here, I added something that I didn't necessarily want to add in there. It doesn't fit my color scheme. I can always come in here and delete that item from this collection at any point. Um, and then again, there's no limit to the number of items that you can have in a collection. There's no limitation to the number of collections that you can have. Um, so these are pretty much endless. And I would highly recommend that you come in and create different collections, be it uh, color collections, style collections, a collection of your past events, anything like that, and then create uh, a collection for it. It's just a great way to keep organized. And you can easily come in here and like, for example, had um, my lavender and white collection. I was able to go into my color collections, click right into my lavender collection that I already had made, grab a couple items and add it over to my design board. So it was very easy for me to go in there. Um, this morning says, I have some items that I added that are in a different format. And those details, for instance, spray rose white versus spray 
rose spray white versus spray rose white. If I go back and clean up my item resource, what happens to the recipes that included the items I deleted? That's actually a really great question, Marie. So for anybody that doesn't know uh, an item created and you use that item on a recipe, and then at some later point, you come back and you delete it out of your item gallery, not if you already have it on an existing worksheet, uh, deleting it here in the item gallery is going to delete it like moving forward, but it's not going to act on anything that you've already created. Just so everybody knows that. Lovely. So um, that's going to be item gallery collections. Uh, again, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, you can definitely uh, eat that. Yes, so um, if you have an item and you've used it in a recipe or you've used it on a worksheet, let's say, um, and then at a later point, you come into your item gallery, it's existing on your worksheet or it's already existing in a recipe, it will not be removed from that recipe or that worksheet. It'll only be removed here in the item gallery and you won't be able to use it like moving forward. All right. Um, so again, if you want to learn any more about the um, item gallery collections, I'm going to have uh, the recap video for that as well in our follow up email. Um, so we're going to go in and go into our recipe gallery now and uh, kind of do the same thing. So recipe gallery collections are new as of this year. They function very slowly to the item gallery collections. Um, everybody does start off with a uh, feature and in my recipes, the featured recipes are going to be the included recipes from details. There's about 32 of them. And then the my recipes are going to be anything that you have added from featured recipes or anything that you have created yourself. Um, additionally, though, you can create multiple collections here, just like you can in your item gallery. For myself, I want to know it down based on uh, arrangement type. So I've got a bouquets, a boutonnieres collection, a centerpieces collection, I have core, um, but you can create any collections that you want. For example, if I go into my bouquets collection, this is going to house all of the bouquets that I have uh, ever saved here. And that way I can easily go in and look at any of the bouquets that I have. Um, but you can also do it with uh, color collections. So if you want to do like color collection, it would house any of your arrangements that fit into that color scheme. You can do that. Um, but the process is going to be the same. You'll always click on that options button at the bottom. Click on selection. Click on the recipes that you want to move. Click that copy button at the bottom. And then let's just go right into this sub collection here. I can go in and paste. Um, so it's going to be just like one giant copy paste, basically, uh, is what we're doing here. Uh, again, if you want to learn any more about the recipe collections, um, follow up email, and then uh, you've also got a uh, an article. Miranda just added there in the chat as well. All right. Um, Next, we did have a whole tips and tricks webinar on the new updates here in the recipe gallery. Um, definitely the uh, recipe collections was one of those things. However, we also had some additional options for our markup and our price. Um, right below that, we also have a new copy list option. So it will copy the list of ingredients that is included in this recipe. So the you can go in and put it into your receipt in the description box there where you can copy a list of all of the recipe or excuse me all of the items that are included in a recipe and then put that into your description. Susie asks will all of these articles be sent in a follow-up email or should I be saving these? So Susie these are actually all accessible from the uh, support let me just close this um, from the support center. So on the main menu here, under support and then support, all the articles that Miranda is putting right now in the chat are going to be in the support center as well. You can always go in there and search, for example, recipe collections, and the article will pop up. 
Um, and this will be true for any one of the different articles that Miranda is putting here. So you won't need to save them. Um, you can always go in there and search for them. Uh, the follow-up email will strictly have all of the um, recap uh, webinar videos in it. Um, all right, so here on my recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. So we made some changes here to our markup and price area. Um, so now if I make changes here, let me just go ahead and update my account. We're gonna get these little icons. Um, on the price, if I make a change down here, I'm gonna get this to notify me that say, hey, you know, you should be um, upping this cost, or excuse me, upping the price based on the change in cost. Uh, so you will now have the option to update that, or you can always just keep it remaining the same. Um, and then the markup, it will always alert you if you've made a change to your markup. And that way, um, if you want to revert back to uh, the saved markup, you can always revert back to that. Those were a couple of the changes there in the recipe. All right. Marie says, back to the item question, if in the future I use the I'm guessing I need to update the recipe with the version of the item I keep. I, uh, it's not required for you to be able to use that recipe moving forward, um, but for the sake of keeping all of your information up to date, I would say yes, go ahead and swap that out for the new item, whichever one you choose to take precedence. Um, the reason that I say this, and just for everybody, is because um, in details, for each of your items, it also contains um, your history. So if you ever need to go back and say, oh, you know, I use this item in this worksheet, I ordered it on this day, um, you can see that. So if you are not updating the item that's in the recipe, your analytics will also not be up to date. All right, so next we're gonna go into our financials under payments. We also had some updates here in the financials area. So uh, we had a lot of people that wanted to be able to, for example, on the retainer, give their client a grace period to pay that first payment. So like maybe I'm sending out the proposal and I wanna give them 14 days from now, pay uh, that initial retainer. So um, we did add some additional options here in the due column. One of which is going to be able to say now plus 14D, meaning 14 days. Um, and it'll allow you to put days from now rather than only giving you days out prior to the event. Like, for example, this is 60 days before the event, 30 days before the event. Um, but we didn't have anything to allow you to add days on from now. Um, so now that is an option. And um, you can adjust that here on any one of the payments pages within an event. Additionally, though, we also have added in our little magic wand here, and what this will allow you to do is a variety of different options. For right now, because I have a mix of both um, percentages and flat amounts, and they're all um, my percentages equal 100 and things like that, I have the option to make all payments percentages, or I can make all payments amounts. However, if I change this and let's say my uh, percentage-based payments do not add up to 100, which is a requirement here on the page, if I click on wand, I now have the options to adjust my percentages to equal 100%. Um, same thing with, let's see, if I had all amounts and my amounts did not add up to my grand total, In my magic wand, I can also now adjust all to equal my grand total. Um, so just a couple of different options there that we added onto this payments page to help uh, functionality be a little smoother. Last month's tips and tricks. Um, so I hope that you guys all were able to attend. This is where we're going to be um, adjusting our proposal and customizing it. So there are a variety of different options here on the proposal as far as customization. Um, and I've got pretty much every day somebody learning something new here on this page. Um, there's just so many options here on the proposal that it's, um, it's hard to kind of keep track of everything. Right. 
So to get started on the proposal, I always recommend that you start off at the very top of the page in the proposal settings. This is a newer area here, um, which will allow you to adjust your layout, like your proposal layout. It will also be an area for you to adjust. Um, and then if you need to adjust any of your company info at the top, there's also that as well. All right, so starting off with our theme here, this is where you can change your layout of your proposal. Um, each one of the details accounts does come preloaded with blooming, blossom, and vanilla. Um, if you ever wanna add additional layouts there, we do have some um, great options in the marketplace under details add-ons. Um, so you guys are always welcome to go in there and look at that. We are running a stocking stuffer special. Just go ahead and put that in there right now too. Um, so keep an eye out on your emails. If you leave us a review, then you get 25% off that you can use towards um, any new proposal themes as well. Um, right below that is gonna be our page number format. So you can adjust that there. You can adjust your fonts here. And then this is all of your company info. So again, another important reason for updating your event defaults because um, that information will populate here automatically. On the proposal here, anything that shows up in red is something that you can adjust. So all of these different fields, all of the different photos here, you can always click to adjust any one of these. It does automatically filter in the first and second contacts names on the featured name one and featured name two. And then also your featured title will always have the event name filtered in there. Next, using our current page dropdown here, we're gonna have our conceptual design where you can add in your floral inspiration here. So I'll just click on one of these to give you an example. I'm gonna go to the choose from in the upper right and then go to favorite items. And I think that my internet is acting up. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of my items here. And I will do this for each one of the different floral inspirations that I have here. Um, same thing with event inspiration, all of these different fields can be edited or adjusted. It is gonna automatically populate with my color palette from the worksheet. And then right above that, I have a uh, space here for my overall feeling that I can add in here as well. In the design agreement, this is going to be um, the information from your contact info, and then also if you have any vendor teams, and then the important information and times. Most of that information was filtered over from the details page. The item the items that I actually used on my uh, worksheet itself, and it will section out here based on item type. So. Um, you can change out the titles for any one of these sections, but also if there's a specific type of item that you don't want to show, like maybe your hard goods, um, on the left-hand side, you can always choose to hide any one of those categories here as well. Next under line items is going to be any of the recipes that you had on your worksheet. Um, all of the information that you see here can be hidden on the left-hand side. So uh, common things that people hide are gonna be like your individual recipe prices, if you wanna hide that. And then um, you can also hide any of the additional information. Eliza says, is there a way to add a client's preferred pronouns under client information? If you put, hmm, uh, it doesn't automatically populate there. However, if in the first name you want to put that person's pronouns, you can certainly do that. Um, or in the last name or something to that effect, you can um, you can put that there as well. So just a suggestion there. But I, I really like that. And I will probably go ahead and put that in as a feature request, Eliza, because um, I think that's great. All right, so um, any of those options can be hidden on the left-hand side there. Your terms are going to automatically populate based on what you had in your default uh, payment terms. This is kind of an example um, at, of the tokens. So right now I have, um, this was event date token. It automatically filtered in my event date. 
Same thing with my clan's name. That automatically populated by the tokens that I had here as well. Um, in the breakdown page, this is going to be our uh, very granular breakdown of everything that's included in the worksheet. On the left hand side, again, though, you can choose to hide any of this information. You can also hide the entire page if you'd like. And then finally, here on the summary page is going to be a breakdown of everything included in the event. It's going to have your payment schedule. If you've made a payment, that information will also live here. And then down at the bottom is an area for you to put your signature and date this before you create the PDF. And then, of course, when you're done, you're going to go ahead and click that save and publish button. So that, that was our the last topic is going to be our cost page. So up at the very top of the event here, once um, everything loads, we're going to go into our cost page, which is going to be uh, basically our order sheet, if you will. While we're waiting for this to load, though, I do also want to um, mention that we did have a full tips and tricks webinar. Both myself and our CEO, Kareen, hosted the webinar on future features. Um, so I want to mention while we have a couple of people in the comments basically asking for different features, we always, always, always welcome um, any feature requests and things like that. Um, this is how details grows and how we improve because we'll never know what you want unless you ask for it. Um, so if you're uh, like that, you want to request to add into details, you can go to the main menu here under support. And then um, in that contact us tab, there's going to be an area for you to be able to put in um, any requests that you have. And then that will go to both um, our support team and it will also go over to the um, development team as well.